Hi, Tom from Fluval here. Today we're coming at you from Fluval headquarters and the subject is beta care and bettas in general. Uh, we have a really interesting display of different bettas here for you today. A variety of, uh, we actually have a rose tail, we have super delta tails, uh, we have half moons, we have placat bettas as well, crown tails, whole variety. What you're looking at right here in these tanks in the middle are a couple of different uh, super delta tails and half moons. This guy over here actually is a red dragon half moon. If I pull this up, you can see he's going to see the other male. We keep uh, dividers between the tanks so that they stay in a bit more of a relaxed state. When they see the other males, obviously they, they tend to get really excited and display all the time. So I'm going to show you the difference. If you look at this guy flaring up here, that's a half moon. You'll see that his caudal fin is basically straight up and down uh, from, from where it meets the body. So it really does look like a half moon, whereas a su super delta tail has a slightly more gradual angle to where the tail uh, leaves the body. See the males displaying at each other, maybe you picked it up. It's, uh, it's a subtle difference, but it's definitely there, and the super tel delta tails definitely tend to have a larger caudal fin. Now, these bettas represent many, many decades of hard breeding efforts or productive breeding efforts by a lot of experienced breeders in bringing these color varieties, these different fin varieties. These are a far cry from the ancestors that these fish were developed from. Bettas are now really super popular thanks to that. And uh, we're keeping them here in basically one gallon tanks, which is an option you have. These are Marina Cubis tanks. They come with LED lighting, which is actually, you know, doesn't impart a lot of heat into the tank. And it's subtle lighting. And that's what you want for a beta. You don't want extra bright lighting. They, in fact, don't really appreciate that too much. And you'll see the colors better on a beta when it's a little bit more subtle versus actually extra bright. These fish actually originated in Thailand and Malaysia, the beta splendens. Uh, varieties of fish from which you see all these beautiful varieties. These are bubble nest breeders and they're not a bantoids, they breathe atmospheric air so they're easy to take care of but what is important is that you change water on a regular basis. In a cube like this every two days, three days maximum you should be changing the water with conditioned water of the right temperature. And we've got some other things that we can show you that will help look after, that will help it make it look a little bit easier for you to look after your bettas as well. So now we've showed you some of these different varieties of uh, interesting betta splendens. Let's take a look at some of the wild bettas that we have. Over here we have um, betta chanoids, which you're going to see some fill footage. They actually spawn for us. We set up a natural type environment. Uh, right now they're busy hiding in it. Ah, there's one right up front right here. And we have some interesting footage of them actually spawning. They're mouth brooders. Those are imports from Indonesia. They like, uh, obviously like all bettas, a little bit more soft, acidic water, temperatures uh, around 78 to 80 degrees. And they're easy to feed. They can be kept in groups, unlike betta splendens, where you have to separate the males and keep the females apart as well from the males. These guys, you can keep, actually keep a couple pairs in the tank in a nice setup. The reason we go through this trouble at Fluval or, or not trouble, but the reason we get into it to this level is that we want to understand what, what wild fish will eat and how they like to be kept as well. It helps us to develop really products that take care of any type of situation. So we always like to look at the full story, not just one particular fish. This is Betta imbellus, which is otherwise known as the peaceful Betta, the female swimming around here in front. We actually keep the male with the female. Uh, it's a fairly good sized tank full of plants. And uh, it's an interesting fish. That's a bubble nest breeder, unlike the Indonesian species I just showed you, uh, the betta uh, chanoids. These guys are bubble nest breeders too. They come from Thailand. And then moving over here to some of the other wild fish that we have, uh, we have betta albimarginata. Again, you can see, you can keep them in groups, an assortment of males, males and females with some natural decor. And uh, we have java moss in there, some almond leaves, peat moss in our filter. Very easy, nice fish to keep. They don't bother each other at all. And if you look at this far end tank, this is really a spectacular fish. This is beta macrostoma. These guys are about a little over two and a half inches long. Uh, they are a mouth brooder too. They come from, uh, they're exported to us from Indonesia. Uh, the male is just off to the left right now. You can see he's picking up a little bit of color. They get to be almost three to four inches in length. You, you do get them to four inches in length. Very aggressive eater. And as you can see, absolutely not shy at all. This is a fabulous fish to set up in a 15, 20 gallon feature tank, such as what we've, we, what we've done here. So that gives you a little bit of insight into the Betta Splendid, some of the variants, and uh, some of our basic setups, and some of the wild fish. 
Now that we're, we've covered some of the introduction, we're going to talk to you about some of the betta habitats that we have and how you should keep bettas. We'll take care of that in part two. Hey guys, coming at you with part two of our betta care video. Um, basically part one, you saw the varieties that we had and a little bit of background on bettas. You saw some really nice fish. Now we're going to look at the habitats and give you a little bit of background on caring for your betta and the conditions you need to create. Now starting off with the habitats, we've got our spec series of tanks here. Here's the spec 5, 19 liters, our little 10 liter cube right beside it. These things are really cool. They come with a built-in filter compartment in the back, which allows you to easily put in a heater. Unobtrusive, you don't see it. And the LED lighting system that comes with these uh, tanks is actually capable of taking care of the needs of lower light level requiring plants, Anubias, uh, cryptocurines, things like that, they, plants like that, they all grow real well in tanks like this. Then of course we've got the Fluval Edge series of tanks, which are another series that are really, really cool when it comes to uh, keeping bettas. Here we have the 23 liter version that we've decked out with some uh, cryptocurines, a bit of driftwood, some Anubias, and there's a really nice bed in there too, a double tail. Uh, beside it, the 46 liter version, you've got two different sizes you can pick from. These makes really, really uh, nice displays. Now, moving on to conditions. Uh, pH, you want a pH range of approximately uh, 6.4 to 7. That's the range that you, bought, you want to be within. A little bit more or less, it's not a big deal. Harder water, not that important a topic for bettas, but definitely a better thing if you keep them softer water. So if you got hard water, try to keep the range somewhere between 2 to 5 dKH. That's actually fairly soft water, they'll do better in general like that. Temperature range, 76 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, a degree more or two, that's not a big deal. But you need that to make sure that the betta's metabolism is where it should be and that the comportment and condition are going to be optimal. And when it comes to conditioning water, peat, tropical almond leaves. Those are the two basic things that uh, when added to betta water are going to import a bit of a stain, a kind of a amber colored stain but they're going to produce a lot of natural acids that are very beneficial to the betta. Trust me, they will be happier. Light level conditions, dimmer to medium type light levels, you don't want to go heavy on that. Some floating plants are always a great addition to a betta tank that helps them build bubble nests and it's a more natural type of environment for them as well. Now, when it comes to water quality, uh, misconception that it, bettas really don't, don't need clean water or they can tolerate dirty water. That might be the case. I'm a city dweller, for example. Would I rather breathe country, breathe country air? <laughs> Absolutely I would. The same goes for your betta. Uh, bettas really should be kept in a high quality of water. You need to do regular water changes. If you have a small filter on the tank, it's actually better. Um, if you think about it, their natural environment, which is choked with vegetation, is a huge biomass that filters the water as well. So the water quality is actually fairly high. The oxygen level might be a little lower because it's warm, but the water quality is actually excellent. So do water changes, think water quality. Forget about the myth of bettas can tolerate really dirty water. Now when it comes to feeding bettas, variety is good just like it is for all tropical fish. A small pellet as a daily feed or, or flakes, all of our fish, both the, uh, the beautiful variants of betasplenins you saw and the wild fish we have here, really relish our fluval flake, fl flake foods. Our beta macrostoma, by the way, we're gobbling down our uh, fluval color enhancing pellets, do really well on that. Frozen foods, things like black worms, uh, frozen black worms, frozen black, frozen black mosquito larva, blood worms. Uh, glass worms, brine shrimp, all these things are great treats for your betta. You should do that on a regular basis. Give them a variety of food. Live foods, if you want to go the extra distance, go for it. Wingless fruit, fruit flies, white worms, uh, daphnia if you can get it. All these things are great treats for betta, for bettas, even if they're given just once in a while, it really, really does help. And being as they have small stomachs, you want to have a couple of small feedings a day, two or three times a day, but just a bit of food, just so that the belly gets a little bit rounded out. Far better tactic for feeding bettas than a large feeding. When it comes to breeding, there's tons of information out, out to you. I'll just say it's not hard to do. You, if you look at our Facebook posting that we had some time ago, we actually captured film of our betta uh, chanoids breeding in our Bella and Bellas. We posted it on Facebook, you can check it out, and if we can uh, get a hold of that footage, we'll certainly make it available to you again. Conclusion, make sure you try and keep some bettas. A lot of people have. 
join the rest of us. It's really a lot of fun. You can set up a small planted tank. There's so many beautiful varieties and colors out there. It's really irresistible.